Um, there is no accident um, in what, obviously, what Nolan just shared, um, what the worship team just led us in, what Jesus was speaking to me about for this evening, what Jesus has been speaking to so many people about for all these, you know, recent weeks and back. He's, God is on the move. <laughs> God is doing something incredibly powerful that is real and that is changing us as a church, as individuals, as a community. It's changing the Father's house. It's going to change Oroville. It is changing Oroville already. Um, I believe it's going to change the world. And something's happening. Like, we had no communication between any of us this evening. And the worship team and what Nolan said and what Jesus was speaking to me about was the same, life and death. I believe that he wanted me to talk tonight about the life and death issue of life and death. And Nolan said so much of the same stuff. In fact, I don't really need to say anything. That was awesome, you know? And he's on the move. He's talking to all of us individually. He's leading us in a direction. He's removing everything that hinders. He's taking away every wall, every barrier in the way. And he wants truth. And he wants us to know who he is. And he wants to stand eyes to eyes with us, heart to heart with us. He wants to know us, to be known by us, to let, for us to let him know us, and for us to fully know him. There was a lot of knowns in those sentences. Hope some of that made sense. But he wants this knowing. He wants this experience. He wants this relationship, this intimacy, this truth. And we get to have it because, as we're going to talk about this evening, we have the one living inside of us who raised Jesus from the dead. God, who sent Jesus, his only son, to die in our place, who then left us with his presence, is the one who lives inside of us. And that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work in our lives. This resurrection life, this resurrection power is at work inside of us. And the the gospel message, the gospel story is everything. The cross is everything. Jesus is everything. And it changes everything. And yes, we focus a lot on the death part of it. And we have to. Surrender is everything. We daily have to surrender. We daily have to die to ourselves. We daily have to say no to our old life and yes to the truth of his life that we're now living in him. It's not about me anymore. <laughs> it's not. We wish it it was some days, but it's not about me anymore. It's I signed up to join his life and he's on a mission, he's on a plan and I get to walk with him wherever he goes. Whatever he says, whatever he does, I'm on his mission and his plan with him. We have to die to ourselves. We have to surrender. We have to say no to the old life. We have to put to death the misdeeds of the body. We have to do that by the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. But there's also life that came after Jesus' death. There's also resurrection power that came after he died and was buried. And then on the third day, he rose again. And that same resurrection power is the power that lives inside of us. On the 7th of March, 20 days ago now, I got woken up in the middle of the night um, and I just instantly heard the sentence, of course, before I was awake, um, tell the spirit of death to go from this campus. Um, and I wanted in my selfishness to go oh, <laughs> back to sleep, <laughs> you know, but I couldn't. And I'd heard that. And then I instantly saw all the houses, all the homes, all the community places on campus where this spirit of death was rampaging. A lot of it was, of course, external the enemy externally coming in to attack us, to hound us. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his mission. Let's just expose his plan on this earth. He's about at every moment of every day in every single one of our lives. He wants to kill us. He wants to kill me, and he wants to kill you, and he doesn't get to do that if we say yes to Jesus, because in Jesus is the power of life. The enemy is about that external work, but it gains momentum and it gains power when we agree with it. And what I started to see and what I started to pray into was just ways that it wasn't specific and it wasn't individual, so don't suddenly panic, but just ways that we, <laughs> that we agree with this death. And I've done it so much in my own life for years of my own life. The, the subtle ways, the little ways, the big ways that we agree with this spirit of death that comes in. And we don't even notice it because it's little and it's under the surface and it happens bit by bit until it's built and there's momentum and it's growing. And suddenly there's this huge fiend, this animal I'm feeding inside of me that wants to kill me. And actually it's my own agreement, you know, fueling what the enemy is doing. The enemy probably doesn't even need to do much in the end because we're fueling it ourselves with our own faith in this thing. We take over the whole thing. 
And Jesus has stood over here going, but I died. I hold the keys to death and to Hades. I died so that you can have life and you get to step into my life with me, but it's my life, he says. It's no longer my life. It's Jesus's life and we have to let go of our own desires, our own plans, um, our own will within that. And yet, it's by far the best thing when we step into his life and do it with him. It's not even a comparison. We live in this fear that we're going to lose out on all the good stuff, on all the best stuff. And we often have no idea, no understanding yet of the fullness and the life and the freedom and the truth that we get to step into. Can we turn to Romans chapter 6? Uh oh, indeed. <clears throat> Um, I don't pretend to understand a lot of Romans, by the way. I'm no theological expert. Um, but I do know that there's a lot of big stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff about death. And there's a lot of stuff about life. There's a lot of stuff explaining to us what actually happened at the cross. What Jesus did at the cross is everything. And Paul, who is writing this letter um, to the Romans... He has just been explaining that now if we've said yes to Jesus, if we've decided to step into his life, that we've said no to sin, we've said no to death, and we've said yes to the power of God living in us. We've said yes to life, um, and we've said yes to Christ. We're now alive in him. And in verse 19 of chapter 6 in Romans, it says, Paul says, I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Praise the Lord that he put some of this in human terms for me to understand. He says, just as you used to offer the parts of your body to s in slavery, to impurity, and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now, now that we're following Jesus, now that we're in his life, offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness, but what benefit did that reap you? At that time, from the things you are now ashamed of, those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is everything that we get this, guys, because it isn't just like a nice pictorial language that is used in the Bible. It isn't just saying that maybe we might die, that one day when we're old, we might die. That It's like this is literal, physical and spiritual death and life that we're talking about. And it really matters that we get this. It really matters that we choose um, to step into the life that God has for us. And when we choose Jesus, we say yes to standing inside of his life. It's all about him. It's his way. His way is perfect. His way is good. He is in control. He is in charge. And I'm stepping into his life. But the good news is that he empowers me to walk out the life that he's calling me to step into. I'm not left alone in it. The same power, and I'm going to keep saying it this evening, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power that lives inside of us. It's not this weak little thing. It's not this like, oh, you've got you're like the spirit living inside of you. It's this powerful, awe-filled, faith-filled, all the power in the possibility of the universe and beyond, all the power that is in God, living inside of us, dwelling inside of us, God in front of us, God around us, and on every side of us, eye-to-eye -eye contact, heart-to-heart -heart connection, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living inside of us. Let's just find out a little bit more about what it says in Romans 8. It says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. 
And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the sinful nature desires. That makes sense, right? If I'm going to live according to sin, live according to death, and my focus where I'm looking is going to be on what the sinful nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mindset on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. And verse 11, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. There's so much more that we could read and we may later. We shall see. This is huge stuff, guys. I can't wrap my mind around it. I don't pretend to understand it all. We're on the journey, the lifelong journey of fathoming what this relationship with him looks like. But when we say yes to Jesus, if you've done that in here tonight, a transaction has happened, an exchange has taken place. We've said no to letting sin control us and we've said yes to letting righteousness and Jesus and love and goodness and purity and holiness be in charge of our lives. And the way that that becomes possible is by the Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit himself living inside of us who empowers us, 100% him, 100% our choice to live this life, his life, Jesus' life that we've been called into. Are there any places in our lives where we're unknowingly or knowingly empowering the old instead of the new? Empowering death and sin and lies, whether accidentally or on purpose, instead of the new? And that's obviously just a rhetorical question for us to start thinking about. And it's not for the sake of condemnation. It's for the sake of freedom. I believe that it's not an accident that Jesus wanted life talked about tonight. He wants to expose the deeds of death because he wants us to step into life and he wants relationship with us. His heart for us is huge. We can't even grasp his compassion for us, his love for us, what he's done for us. And he's calling us into this love relationship with him that's filled with the fullness of life. And we run back to death so many times because it feels familiar, it feels safe. I understand, I know I've done it. His life might feel like the new thing for a minute. His love might feel like the new thing for a minute. But it changes everything. Jesus himself says loads of incredible things about himself. Some of them, them are that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the beginning and the end. He lives forever. He holds the, the keys to death and Hades, so many other things. He's the gate for the sheep to walk through. He is the way. If we're lost and we've never found the way, if we found the way and got lost, if we're actively running away from the way, will we come back to the only way? The only way into life, the only way into his love, the only way into true freedom. The only way into an eternal life that means anything and counts for anything and is filled with so much fruit. He is the way. And he is the truth. And he is the life. And he wants a relationship with us. He wants to come and live inside of us. He wants his heartbeat and his life to be dwelling in us. And it's a strong, strong thing. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power that can live inside of us. Can we just flick to Ephesians chapter 1? Uh, 
actually, you know what? I've got a few more minutes than I thought I had. Let's flick back to <laughs> Romans 8. <laughs> this is new and exciting. The clock's going slow. Wow. Okay. I will be quick still, though. Promise. Um, so Romans 8, um, I stopped at verse 11 in there, and I just wanted to, to raise this. Like with this life that we're invited into, there really is this responsibility. There's an incredible reward with it, but there's a responsibility for how we live and how we live matters. So it says here in verse 12, and therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live because those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. Don't we want to be people who are led by the Spirit of God and who are his children? If you did not receive a spirit spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Sometimes I think we want the first part of that verse to be removed, you know, if we'll share in his sufferings. It's like, can we just share in his glory part? That would be really nice. Like, that sounded wonderful. Glory sounds like a really exciting word there. But it's both, isn't it? It's sharing in his sufferings and it's sharing in his glory. But if we will share in every part of Jesus' life, his death, the burial, his resurrection... (laughs) we get access to this power, his power that lives inside of us. So now we can flick to um, Ephesians 1. I want to pray this prayer of you. And there's a prayer that Paul um, prays for the Ephesians here, and it's really powerful. Um, And I just, I want it to be something that actually dwells in us and becomes a reality in us, and that we then get to see happening and occurring in other people around us. So why don't you just close your eyes for a moment and I'm just going to pray this over you and then we'll just see where we go. So this is Paul talking, but we're just going to pray this over each one of us. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of our hearts may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which he has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So right now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would open our eyes and our hearts and you would give us that wisdom and revelation that we just asked for here. We ask that you would enlighten us, that you would empower us, that you would show us the truth of the hope to which you've called us, that you'd show us more of the fullness of the inheritance that we've been called into, that we would even get a glimpse, even get a picture of what you're calling us into. And that today, that we would know more of this great power, your mighty strength that is at work inside each one of us. God is in us, guys if we've said yes to him. And he wants to be more in us. And if you've never said yes to him, he wants to be in you. He wants a relationship. He wants to get to know you. He wants to talk friend to friend. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to save you. He wants to rescue you. He wants to deliver you. And he can set you free. There is nothing that is impossible for him. He be 
death. He's beaten everything. Nothing is bigger than him. He is bigger than everything. He holds all power and all authority. It just said in those verses, and it's a truth that we know when we see it at work in our lives. He is above everything and in everything and through everything and around everything. He's bigger than everything. And he, by his grace, and by our faith in him, comes and lives in us. And says, will you get to know me? Will you love me and will you let me love you? Will you step into my life and do your life with me? So Jesus, we're asking that this could become a reality even more so for us today. If we have been agreeing with death, we are sorry. Would you forgive us, Jesus? Many of your lives have been unfair. I get to hear many, many of them. When I get the privilege of meeting with you for, for inner healing, for prayer ministry, many of your lives have genuinely been unfair. And I could cry for you sometimes. And if I could, I know that he could way more than that. But even with that being said, death has stolen so much of our pasts. And we get to choose whether it's going to get to take our future too. We get to choose what we're going to follow and who we're going to follow. We get to rise up. We get to stand in faith. Where there was no choice in the past, perhaps there is a choice today. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. We're going to open up the altars at the front. If you want to come and repent where agreements with death have possibly been made, then please just come and do that. If you want to just come and have a conversation with Jesus, if you want to ask him to fill you with his life again, if you want to choose to step into his life again, you can come and do that. If you want to get to know Jesus for the very first time today, if you want to know what his life and his love is all about, what his death bought for you and what you get to step into in following him, then we would love to pray with you. There's going to be pastors just walking around praying over people. There'll be people available as this happens. But just, just come to the front. I'd even beg you just to run to the front. No one needs to know what's going on. No one needs to know what conversation you're having with Jesus. But if you want more life in your life, and it's more of his life, come and surrender to him again today. Come and ask him to reveal to you his mighty strength. God is here right now. He's living, he's real. What his son did at the cross changed everything. It was a game changer. We get to have relationship with God now. We get to step into his life. Come and ask him about that today. Come and meet with him. You can talk to him. He'll talk back to you. Let's boot out as a church, as a family together, the spirit of death. The sting of death has no more power when Jesus is involved, but we have to stop fueling it. 
forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, Jesus. We don't want to care what people think of us anymore. We don't want to hold back anymore. We don't want to be held in false comforts anymore. We don't want to be friends with familiar old things anymore. We want to say yes to you. And we thank you that your love is right there to meet us in those places that feel new, in those places that feel unfamiliar. You're right there to meet us. Jesus is the living one. The living one. Everything to do with life is in him. Just come to him. Just be real with him. Just be honest. Just open your heart to him. Ask him to meet you and he will. When he knocks at your door, will you say yes to him? death we expose what you've been up to we see you and we expose your tactics and your strategies and we say no to you by the power of Jesus Christ by the authority of Jesus Christ and we say yes to you Jesus we say yes to life we say yes to truth we choose you Jesus we choose your life We choose to live. We want to live, Jesus. Hopelessness go, apathy go, fear go. And we fix our eyes on you, Jesus Christ. The author and perfecter of our faith. We love you. We love what you've done for us. We love what you've done in our lives. We want to love you back with our lives. We want to live lives that are worthy and honoring to you. We recognize that there's an obligation with how we must live. We recognize that there's a responsibility. We want to live in holiness. 